Give it away, give it away, give it away now. As I've mentioned before, if that thing you're giving away is education to help out the next guy. And this is a Q&A podcast, a short episode. Oh, by the way, I'm Brian. This is the HVAC School podcast, the podcast that helps you remember some things you might have forgotten along the way, as well as helps you remember some things that you forgot to know in the first place. This message is from Fred. Fred has a question about loads, energy, insulation, how to know more. And before we hear from Fred, we're going to hear from our great sponsors, Carrier and Carrier.com, the ESCO Institute, and the HVACR Learning Network. Our friends Howard and Jerry Weiss, Jason Objute, Eugene Silverstein, Clifton Beck, all great guys who are huge advocates for the industry, are working hard to provide industry-leading online content for HVACR professionals. Visit hvacr.elearn.network to access reliable, up-to-date, and relevant digital resources and even earn continuing education hours. Enhance your knowledge today with HVACR Learning Network from the ESCO Institute. As always, find out more by going to escogroup.org. Refrigeration Technologies at refrigetech.com. The AHR Expo 2025 at ahrexpo.com. Are there any reference points, apps, websites, charts, etc., that are reliable? That way you can figure out the insulation value of a house based on the year the house was built, the region, without having to take the customer's words for it, or drilling holes in walls to try to do an accurate load calculation without just assuming numbers. All right. So to kind of summarize Fred's question here, it's a challenge. It's a challenge because we often need to do load calculations. We need to figure out how much energy is expected to enter and leave a structure in a wide range of different outdoor conditions. And we have to take into account conduction, convection, and radiation. We have to take into account conduction, heat moving through walls and doors. And we have to consider convection, leakage in the structure, leakage of our ductwork, BTUs that are leaving due to pressure imbalances or entering. If we're trying to cool and BTUs are coming in, we need to get them out. If we're trying to heat and BTUs are going out, we need to get them in. We need to know things about the structure. And if you've ever done a manual J, I mean, back to the times when people were actually doing it on paper, you had to look at tables, you had to look up tables and figure out what the R value of different things were, R value and U factor of different things in order to calculate your loads, as well as things like overhangs and window coverings and internal loads from appliances and how many people are likely to live in the home and all that kind of thing you have to figure out because you're trying to figure out BTUs in, BTUs out. And you're also trying to figure out both latent BTUs associated with moisture and BTUs associated with temperature differential. But specifically what Fred is asking about more than anything else is like, how can you know without cutting open walls or without going into sometimes even attic spaces that you can't really know what the insulation is? You can't know all that. Well, the first thing is, and this is the most obvious and stupid answer, is that the better softwares that you use, softwares like WriteSoft, are going to have a lot of that built in where you can reference that. And it's going to be based on the age of the house, so on and so forth. But obviously, there's a lot of regionality there of what's common and what's not common. And that's where, all right, where can you go to reference this information? There are some softwares. There are some websites. None of them that I've found are like super easy. And maybe this is a good opportunity for others to chime in after we release this podcast and give some other suggestions. And you can always email me, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N at HVACRschool.com, or you can do one of these speak pipes as well. But I'm going to list a couple because that's specifically what Fred asked. So I want to answer Fred's question. So ASHRAE has their handbook with a variety of charts and tables for calculating heat transfer, R values, U values. So if you go to ashray.org slash technical dash resources, you'll find all kinds of stuff. Or you can just go to ashray.org and find it there. That's more of an engineering type of resource. So each one of these is going to have its own specialty. One of the best out there is something called RedCalc. RedCalc is an app specifically designed to calculate R values and U factors actually in the field. So to actually calculate it. And when you're using RedCalc, you need to be prepared to do things like take surface temperatures inside and outside based on surface temperatures and air temperatures inside and outside. And with that information, RedCalc will actually help you calculate those R values and U factors. And before we get too far into this, I just want to mention what R value and U factor is. 
So our value is a measure of insulation's ability to resist heat flow. And so we're specifically talking about conduction here. That's really what our value is all about. So a insulation with a higher R value means that it resists the movement of heat more. You know that. So like R30 insulation in an attic means that it has a higher resistance to heat flow. U factor is just the inverse of R value. So the U factor is a measure of how much heat is transferred through a material. And again, you can use that for walls, windows, that type of thing as well. So U factor tells you how much is transferred through. R value is the inverse. Whether the inverse of one another, R value is the resistance to heat moving through a particular wall structure or ceiling or whatever you're trying to calculate. In order to use red calc, you're going to have to get a TD, a temperature difference across the surface. And obviously, the more there's a variation between indoor temperature and outdoor temperature, the easier that's going to be to calculate. Obviously, if you're at equilibrium, if the indoor and outdoor temps are the same, you're not going to be able to use red calc to tell you anything because it needs to see that TD in order to calculate it. So that's red calc. Red calc was made by residential energy dynamics. That's what red stands for. But it's been absorbed now. At least all the free tools have been absorbed into the DOE website. And so I don't know if I should give you the URL here because it's kind of a confusing one, but it's, I'll do it anyway. BASC.PNNL.gov slash red calc. We'll put that down in the show notes. BASC.PNNL.gov slash red calc is the link to Find out more about that app, get that app. And they have a wide range of tools that you can use through RedCalc, which are highly suggested and a lot of professionals use them. Like I mentioned, Manual J software, WriteSoft, Quick Model, CoolCalc, others like that can help you and give you a lot of basic lists of options based on the age of a building. ResCheck is a free software tool from the US Department of Energy. It's more about like compliance with energy codes, but it can help you in some of these areas as well. Again, probably not as practical for what you're asking for, but it contains a lot of similar questions. And you can find that at energycodes.gov slash rescheck, energycodes.gov slash rescheck. Some other ones here that, again, may or may not be super helpful. iEngineer app gives you a bunch of material properties. Again, a little bit more complicated to use. Online resources. Oak Ridge National Laboratory has a roof calculator, so... You can figure out different roof assemblies there, and that's a good resource. One of the better ones here, as far as a fact sheet, is the DOE insulation fact sheet from the U.S. Department of Energy. It's just going to give you a lot more information to go on to help lead you in the right direction. Again, probably not exactly what you're looking for, but one of the better resources, and that's on energystar.gov. But if you just type into Google the DOE insulation fact sheet, you'll find that. Engineering Toolbox is one that we use a lot. They have an R-value calculator as part of the Engineering Toolbox that can be helpful. Most of the insulation manufacturers also have pretty good charts. CertainTeed has an R-value chart that can be helpful. But yeah, that's all I've got. I don't have anything else. I think RedCalc is probably the best thing for you to look into and play around with in order to do this better. One nice thing is, is that often within your own marketplace, Houses are built similarly in certain neighborhoods or in certain eras. And so as you get used to your own marketplace and you figure it out one time by consulting with engineers or by consulting with the different resources that I gave you here today, you can start to get a pretty good sense of what those standard construction assemblies are and what the R values are of those assemblies. There's a lot of things that aren't nice about being a contractor and having to do your own load calculations. But one of the things that is nice is that as a contractor, you tend to work in a fairly confined area, whereas a designer might work all over the country or an engineer might work all throughout a state. And one advantage of knowing your market is you do develop that tribal knowledge. And that isn't a elimination of software or of doing good load calculations. But once you get used to, oh, okay, that's how they build this wall. And that's the R value of this wall just makes it easier. And so it's like most things, practice makes perfect. No great simple answers to that because there are so many building materials that can be deployed. And like you said, You just don't necessarily know what's behind those walls. And even beyond what you're asking here, as far as our values and all that, things like blower doors, really knowing the leakiness of the structure, really knowing the leakiness of the ductwork. There's a lot of fudge factor in models like ACA Manual J because there are just a lot of things that are hard to know unless you test. And that's where if you want to really, really know, you can use a combination of things like red cow, do a blower door, do a duct leakage test, and then you'd really know. You'd have a much more accurate load calculation at that point. But in the absence of that, you just have to have a lot of tribal knowledge about how houses are built and get as much information as you possibly can, both through looking at the structure, 
analyzing past power bills from the client, talking to the client about maybe issue areas within the house is your best bet. But again, I'm certainly never saying just use the handometer or don't do a load calculation because you absolutely need to. But just know that the average load calculation that's run by a contractor is not very accurate because there are so many things that you need to know that, is, that are very hard to know after the fact. But the more you focus on your own market and become used to those assemblies using the tools we talked about, and the more you deploy more advanced measuring techniques, the more likely you're going to come up with really good results for your clients. So I know people get annoyed with me because there's always so much nuance. Like I just don't always give simple answers. And hopefully in the next several years, these answers will get simpler and simpler. But for right now, they're not always very simple. All right. Thanks for the question. Appreciate it. As always, any of you can submit a question by going to speakpipe.com slash HVAC school. And we'll talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. Hey.